Welcome folks, Technivers here. This is Kira. Now Kira is a 3D object slicing application. It's used in conjunction with your 3D printer to make almost anything. But how does it work? Stick around and find out. We'll go over each setting one by one, each in five minutes or less. And be sure to bookmark this playlist and hit that subscribe button. Please feel free to share. It helps us out a ton. And now without further ado, today on Kira Settings in 5 Minutes or Less 2021 Edition. Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivers. Welcome back folks to another Kira in 5 Minutes or Less video 2020 edition. Today we're going to be looking at another one of those magical shell settings that make our prints so beautiful on the outside and it is going to be horizontal expansion. So what you're looking at here is layer number 73 of a pre-sliced copy of a file from Maker's Muse called the Egg Torture Test. Now you can only get this file from him so unfortunately I'm not able to share it but you can find it on his channel and it's really easy to find. And the reason I'm using this file is because I had had somebody ask me if I knew of a way in Kira to increase the size of the gap between these three models that it's printing uh, because their parts are becoming fused together when they print it. So I'm going to show you a setting I use very often when I'm doing print in place models. And real quickly, I just want you to observe that there is three extrusion lines here. There is an infill line, an inner wall line, and an outer wall line, okay? And right now I'm using no horizontal expansion. You can do this in the positive and negative direction. We're going to be using negative, and I'm going to make it rather large because I want to illustrate this really well. So we're going to hit negative 0.5 so we're going to remove a half a millimeter from the outer perimeter of this entire object's surface let's hit slice it's going to take a minute to slice but you will see a big difference in the size of the gap and the size of the model now we're not changing the geometry of the model other than reducing it and it's not altering um, dimensions such as height width things like that other than that amount on each side, but it will also remove that same amount from the interior and sides of the model where it's not the actual outside. It's still a shell. Um, I know that sounds confusing, but you'll see here in just a second what I'm talking about. And yes, this is three individual models and it could easily become fused together because there's not much of a gap in there. We're trying to eliminate that problem and obviously I'm not going to remove uh, a half a millimeter from all of it. I'll show you the settings that I would properly use here in just a second. But as you can see, this is a pretty drastic illustration. We now only have that one outer wall extrusion line. There is no second inner wall line and there is no infill line. So we've also increased the size of the gap between our models, which will help prevent them from fusing together. Let's go down and take a look at the rings. You can see they're not touching at all here. And that's a good thing. So um, we don't want them reduced by that much. We just want to make sure that that gap remains there. So let's go ahead and try negative 0.04. And I try to keep my, my horizontal expansions between this right here and maybe negative 0.16. So I'm going to go ahead and slice this. And you'll see that that gap has gotten a little bit smaller. And the model has returned closer to its original size. We really don't want to, as I said, alter the geometry too much. We're just trying to slightly increase the space between these parts. So, as this is slicing, uh, I'll tell you about the next episode. We're going to be taking a look at Z-seam alignment and Z-seam position. And those are also two very, very handy things to use while you're looking at shell settings. But for the gist of this, basically just remember horizontal expansion is a great thing to use. I tend to leave it on at negative 0.04 pretty much all the time. Sometimes I do take it off, uh, and I do increase it for certain particular prints, such as a print-in-place pair of pliers that I was having trouble with. I increased it a little bit for that, and it helped quite a bit with the moving parts. And I have also made it a positive value on certain prints. And the reason you might want to do this is if you have, say, a screw and a, or a nut and a bolt, and they are just a little bit loose fitting. You can increase the horizontal expansion on just one of them slightly to increase the, to, to make the fit a little bit snugger. So this is about to finish here and we'll see what it looks like with the minor horizontal expansion. It should look a lot like the first picture. I know we'll get at least two extrusion lines. We should get three, but we'll have to go back up to layer 73 here. You can see there's a lot less gap in here. 
let's jump up to 73 and yeah it looks like for the most part we are getting um, two to three extrusion lines depending on where it is in the arc and how wide it is so that's not bad I think this would print properly and in fact I might go ahead and try it out but first I think I'm gonna go ahead and go make my own torture test we'll see you guys in the next episode as I said we'll be covering that Z seam alignment and position which is gonna be very important so you won't want to miss it well that's it guys that's gonna wrap up this video if you've noticed the shirt the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out. And know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.